In the last video we talked about humans and what kind of system they have in place to produce sound. We said that the actual larynx was one of the main structures. I mean there's more than the larynx, there's also the teeth, the tongue, the soft and hard plate, etc. But the larynx was one of the most important structures for us to produce sound. And remember what was happening as air was passing through the trachea, right? So whilst it was here at the, at the tip of the trachea before it entered the voice box, the larynx, air was like this, it was all uniform, it wasn't in any particular pattern, but as it passed the vocal cords which were inside the actual larynx, these vocal cords were the muscles that were vibrating, right? so they were vibrating muscles, and the vibrations then caused these different patterns which we call um, compression when they're, everything is really tied together and refraction when things are quite a, quite far apart. And this has to happen for there to be sound, right? Sound happens only if we have these different types of patterns. So these patterns are created by the larynx, more specifically by the vocal cords which are inside the larynx. And um, this happens in humans. This is how humans produce sound. But then we could ask the question, how do other animals, do other animals have the same kind of production of sound, larynx and the vocal box, vocal cords? or do they have different types of systems? And that's what we're going to cover in this video because Dot Point says students will gather and process information from secondary sources to outline and compare some of the structures used by animals other than humans to produce sound. So it says other than humans, so I mean, I've mentioned the human example again because it's important for you to actually know the human example because you also have to be comparing them maybe to humans as well in, in the exam. But you need to know, for this top point, you need to know other examples. So I've covered two examples, which are the cricket and the raven, or generally it's just a bird. All, all of them have a similar system. But the two systems for the, the cricket and the raven of how they produce sound. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to outline the structures. I'm going to mention the structures and go through them in a bit of detail. And I'm also going to compare them with each other as well, because that's what the dot point says, outline and compare. All right, so first we'll talk about the cricket. Now the cricket is one of those, like, it's similar to a grasshopper. It has its head, yeah, I guess most animals have a head, but it has these wings, it has a, a thorax, an abdominal cavity. But for sound, when it comes to crickets, they actually use most of their wings to produce sound. So that's, that's again, when it says compare, that's a big difference, right? We don't use wings um, to produce sound. Most other things don't produce wings, but crickets produce wings. And like, I'm, I would love to make a sound, the sound that crickets make, but knowing how I make sounds, it's probably not gonna be too useful. I'll probably make a random sound, but I'll, I'll, I might even have a go. It'll be one of those, those no, no, I'll just, just forget about that one. I do not even know how to make the cricket sound. But um, they have a distinct sound. It's it's obvious. Like when you often when you go in, in the dark, you hear the crickets. They have that sound, right? And they make the sound using their wings. So how do they do that? Well, they put their wings at 45 degrees Celsius. And you, this is stuff that you should remember because it says out on the structures. So the structures are their wings. They have two wings. A four wings. That's the front wing. Four means front and hind means back, so we've got two wings, a front wing and a, and a back wing. They position their wings at 45 degree angle, which is here in this diagram, it is already 45 degrees, right? So this would be roughly 45 degrees. And what they do then is they rub. So they rub their their wings. So the hind, they rub the fore wing over the hind wing, right? So these two wings are gonna rub and that rubbing will create friction. And that friction is enough vibration to create the compression and refraction patterns that we need to produce sound, right? So if this were the normal kind of air molecules without any um, cricket wing refraction and compression, and this is how it would look like, then if you grab the wings and kind of put them in and then do the whole rubbing against each other, right? What would happen is we would produce this kind of pattern. So whenever they would rub, there would be a compression section being created and a refraction pattern and without compression and refraction we wouldn't be able to actually have sound so these air molecules produce their sound patterns because the wings rub against each other and that's what produces the sound right so when you hear a cricket it's not actually their head producing any sound it's the wings um, so that's the, the outline and then the compare so you can obviously tell the difference between a human production of sound and the 
the, the cricket production of sound, there isn't too much similarity. They're quite different. I mean, they're, they're very much far apart. But one animal that has a bit of a similar, more similar way of producing sound would be the birds. Avian, you might have heard that word a couple of times. Avian just refers to anything that, that has flight. In many cases, it's kind of the bird that's being talked about here. Um, so in this case, we're talking about birds, but because it says, talk about animals, so it's often if you say bird, that's kind of a, a class of animals. So if, if you want to remember an, a specific example, you can just remember the raven. But basically, any bird will use a very similar system to produce sound. Although some birds can't produce any sound, but most of them can. But the raven would be one example of a bird that used that system. So the one I'm going to explain in a second. All right, so it will have something called a sirenix. Sirenix. Again, pronunciation not too good, but siren. siren that's how you. That's how you spell it. Um, this syrinx is located between the trachea and the bronchi. Or the, the two bronchus. So we have our larynx here, and birds don't use the larynx as much as humans do. They do have one, but their actual um, sound production system is actually not located there, but it's located between the bronchi, which are these ones. So this, this is the tubes which lead to the lungs are the bronchi, or the bronchus. Each of these is a bronchus, and together they're bronchi. So it's between the bronchus two bronchus and the trachea. So this is the trachea is a windpipe. So here are the bronchus. These are the bronchus. And then this is the trachea. Right, so trachea here and bronchus here. So it's in between the bronchus and the trachea. You can find the syrinx, which is this part here. That's basically the syrinx. Um, so that's where it is between the trachea and the bronchi. And it has this elastic tympanic membrane. So if you want to remember this example for your exam, you can just remember that it has an elastic membrane. You don't really need to, I mean, if you want to, if you, if you can have a good memory and you put down tympanic membrane, you probably, that'd be good, for, it's generally quite good, but you just say it has an elastic membrane, which is found in this syrinx, that's good enough, right? But important is how does it actually use this membrane for it to produce sound, as opposed to remembering this exact name. Right, so first of all, these are the th three things in birds that can can change to produce different types of sounds. So first of all, the pressure of the air that moves through the bronchi or the bronchus through the syrinx. Right, so this is the syrinx and this is the bronchus. So if the air moves really, really quickly, that's going to produce a different sound than it moves if it moves slowly. So if the low pressure, that will affect the sound. Low pressure and high pressure air produce different types of sounds. Right, so pressure of the air is one thing that will affect the sound that a bird makes. The size of the syrinx as well. So if this diameter, like if at the moment it's this diameter is this big, but if the diameter were bigger, then the sound the bird would produce would also be different. Right? So the size of the syrinx, the pressure that flows through it are two things that change the actual sound being produced. But then there's also this movement of the membrane. Right, so this, I'm set this this tympanic membrane, which is right here. This is the tympanic membrane. When this vibrates, right, so this will go rock back and forth when when air passes through. When this vibrates, that's what causes these compression and refraction patterns that are that are required to produce sound. Right, so these refraction and compression patterns are produced when there's movement of the membrane. Whereas when it comes to larynx and humans, right, larynx and humans. They had the vocal cords, so we, so humans had the vocal cords. That's how what we have, whereas birds have the tympanic membrane that moves and produces the actual vibrations. Right? So again, that's a bit of a difference because you need to compare the structures. That's the difference between birds and mammal and birds and humans. Birds use tympanic membrane. Humans use vocal cords. I'll quickly cover that point again. Outline and compare the structures of used by animals other than other than humans to produce sound. Because it, says, because it says animals, it doesn't really matter which animals you choose, just make sure you got you have two animals because you need to have more than one. Uh, otherwise it would say animal. All right, so animals, two animals, the ones I chose was the cricket. Um, it's, it's structures to produce sound are the wings. Um, they have their wings at 45 degree angle when they want to make a sound. They'll rub the front wing um, over the back wing 
and that produces friction, and this friction will produce the compression and refraction waves or patterns that are required for sound. Whereas a bird does not use its wings, it uses its sirings, which is located between the trachea, the windpipe, and the bron bronchi, which are the pipes that go to lungs, and it has an elastic tympanic membrane, and this membrane can vibrate back and forth, and this will produce sound. So the pressure of the air, so the speed of the air that moves past the syrinx, the size of the syrinx, and the movement of the membrane, all of these three things affect the actual sound being produced by birds. And that's one big difference between birds and humans. Birds use the tympanic membrane and humans use vocal cords. But I hope that was useful.